After thousands of miles, a screeching halt on an aircraft carrier, and a hop by chopper, I landed on the USS Anzio, the U.S. Navy's guided missile cruiser, lead defender of the USS Harry S. Truman, and home away from home for Lieutenant Commander Bobby Rashad Jones. You've been to my office. Yes. I have taken four planes and a helicopter to get to your office. Which is pretty cool, right? <laughs> After a CNN report recently aired detailing our special friendship, this was the first terrorist attack uh, on the United States from ISIS. Now. My reporting on a world at war and his fighting in one, the U.S. Navy granted me rare and exclusive access to the lives of these young sailors deployed in the Arabian Gulf. And I was honored to climb aboard. All right, so this is... Is this your room? My state room. I live, work, council. What do you have over there? I have pictures of important Rashad. people so yeah you're there you're stuck staring at me and next to your sweet family it's more like you're staring at me <laughs> you just kind of have stuff that you want to keep in keep you focused on why you're doing it so like all of my team pictures when i played football at the academy if me being out here separated from my family ensures the safety and of, of, of millions back home then it's worth it those are the ones that got the bottom right the average age on board the USS Anzio is 27, but many of these millennials exude a maturity and a sense of sacrifice far beyond their age. The sailors on this ship are in harm's way every day. Zodi, I have visual of the small boat. It's right there, so just aim to the left above it. Responding to unknown and potentially nefarious vessels at sea. You come left, steer course two, four, five weekly testing the ship's weapon systems. If called upon, the USS Anzio has missiles on board capable of hitting targets in Iraq and Syria some 1,000 miles away. It's nighttime here at the USS Anzio, both outside and in. They keep these labyrinth-like hallways dark for a reason. The reason is, if in the case of combat and these sailors have to get up and rush outside at night, it'll be easier for their eyes to adjust. Along these claustrophobic corridors and dizzying stairwells exists a brotherhood. They rise together and relax together too. Hi. I'm Brooke. Nice hi. to meet you guys. How was your trip out hi, here? Hi, hi. I love a good helo ride. <laughs> so what do you have to do in your rare downtime? This. This is it? No, it is. Video games. Yeah. Um, extra. What do you wish you had that you don't? Keep it clean. <laughs> Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wi Wi-Fi? Yeah, definitely Wi-Fi. Are you guys all on Facebook? Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me. I use a little a little red pepper. Take a meal with them in the mess deck. These boys can eat. Those French toast sticks. What's your favorite? Bacon. Bacon? Georgia. In Georgia. Gotta have, Gotta have your bacon. On the way to go. Can take a man out of the South, but can't take the South out of the man. <laughs> Aboard the USS Anzio, not all the sailors are men. Hi, Brooke. You guys have it so much better than the guys. We do, we do. <laughs> A Naval Academy grad and one of only two women of 370 plus men stationed on Anzio, Lieutenant Precious McQuaid made a gut-wrenching decision last November, leave her baby girl back home when duty called. I mean, it's definitely tough, but I the example that at least I'm setting for her and breaking some of the gender norms, you know, that women have fallen into um, and giving the men that I work with the experience of seeing females, you know, doing the same profession and uh, the role models that I can make for both the men and women that I work for and that I've worked with um, in the past, that's why I'm here. Which is incredibly admirable, but I imagine you have days where you shut the door and you weep. I think the baby is hard, you know, it's the first separation from her for probably longer than six days. Nighttime allows a moment to think of loved ones back home and to sneak in some sleep. This is where you sleep? Yes, this is where we sleep. You were Puts saying sometimes here. you get better sleep. Oh yeah. Here? Oh yeah. In this teeny bed? In this tiny bed, yes. Why? Yes. Well, when the ship rocks, it's kind of like your mother's rocking you to sleep. I don't know. It's one of those things. I mean, this is how narrow it is, my mm -hmm. forearm. Mm -hmm. And you crawl into this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Every night. I, it's, it's a trick to it. You, you get used to it after a while. Can you please show me? Sure. I have it right here. And I'll close my curtain. That yeah. means don't bother me? Right. Close the curtain. But the XO, he has a pretty loud voice. So when he comes down and inspects You hear him coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes. The XO, the ship's executive officer. Like that. Let them know that I'm paying attention. And the sailor's disciplinarian slash dad. As someone whose responsibility is the daily routine of the ship, the discipline of the ship, the safety of the ship, it keeps you up at night. Um, and that's just for the stuff you do know. The stuff that you don't know is just as scary sometimes. What is your biggest fear? What is the one thing that truly keeps you up at night? Two things, really. Not completing the mission and losing a sailor. But the goal is to accomplish the mission and then to bring everybody back home. The, the relationship that you have with the XO over there on Anzio, I, th I think is awesome. And I think that's a great American story. And I think your recognition of him and the influence that he had on your life by what he stands for. And I think the more people that know about it, the better it is for our nation. When you finally get to go home, what's the first thing you're going to do? Going to hug my wife and my kids and tell them that daddy's home. It makes you realize what you're fighting for. What these men and women are fighting for is nothing short of exceptional. As for my friend since the seventh grade. So you have a safe trip back, okay? Thank you for coming out. Thank you for all the sailors. I got to see you and meet you. you. Tell everybody how we're doing back home. We'll be home soon, okay? Thank you. No problem, no problem. Okay. Saying goodbye wasn't easy. But now, more than ever, I understand why he does what he says he needs to do. Oh, give me a minute. I am so grateful. I am changed from being there. And I just want to thank the Navy and I want to thank my friend who is watching from the Persian Gulf with all those sailors. <sighs> Thank you. And before I let you go, I ask them if they have messages for their families, and here they are. To my wife, Erica, I love you. My dog, Asher, I love him too. <laughs> and uh, Chicago and Jersey, you guys are the best people ever. I love you guys. To my wife, Darcy, and my son, Charlie, I love you guys and miss you. Uh, to my mom, my dad, uh, brothers and sisters, I uh, love you guys. Can't wait to be home to see you guys. To everybody back home in the Sweden of New York, I love you. I miss you. I will be back, and I can't wait to see you guys. To my husband, Keith, and my daughter, Vesper, I love you guys. I miss you so much. And to my parents, the rest of my family out there, we're well over halfway done, ready to get back. Thanks for holding everything down back there. Love you guys. I'm sure your friends and family miss you very much. Uh, they have been on deployment for now five months. They are supposed to be home in June. And Rashad, you want to go to the Braves-Mets game here in New York? I'm going to work on making that happen for you. I can make you that promise. Thank you so much to the U.S. Navy and to the men and women in uniform. I appreciate it.